Welcome to This Week in Richmond, except we are not in Richmond. We're in beautiful downtown Galax at the Fiddler's Convention, the Poor Man's Dinner, and we have a very special guest, Senator George Allen, Governor George Allen, but I think Senator will... George is fine. George is fine. <laughs> Thank you for being with us as a guest and talking with our viewers. You've been out here numerous times. Start the conversation just talking about this region of the Commonwealth. Well, it's fun being in Galax. We're at the Old Time Fiddlers Convention, and it's just great music and great fiddling. And um, I actually started my professional career in Southwest Virginia. I graduated from law school at the University of Virginia, and I got a, a job with Judge Williams, who was U.S. District Court Judge for the Western District of Virginia, and the offices were in Abingdon. So I moved to Abingdon, and I was just in Smith County before this, and I said, yeah, I took the bar exam in Roanoke, had to find a place to live around Abingdon and stayed at Hungry Mother State Park in my sleeping bag. And, uh, <laughs> right. and I, I very much love Southwest Virginia. I love the people. I have a lot of belief in the people of Southwest Virginia. And, and this last week I've been campaigning around, uh, not just for myself, but listening to people and folks that are running. And one thing I just hear from people all over Southwest Virginia, I've been in Richlands and Bristol and Abingdon and uh, Claypool Hill, uh, Withville, Bland, Chilhowie, and Martinsville, and Stewart, and so forth, is that uh, people care about jobs. And, uh, and when I was governor, and, and even now, I just think we've got to get jobs here, where, where people uh, who their children graduate from high school, they may go off to college somewhere, but they want them to say where their family, their roots, their heritage is, and so often uh, they're not have, able to do that. The other thing I hear so much, David, from people here um, is about gas price, gasoline prices, because folks who live in the country, even folks who live in outer suburbs, have to drive long distances, and these high gas prices really uh, uh, are, are punishing uh, to families, and uh, especially lower and middle income families. And, and so what I hear from, from people, especially in southwest Virginia, but you hear in Virginia Beach, you hear in northern Virginia, is they're willing and ready to be able to produce the energy that we have to power our commonwealth or power our country for that matter because there's a, we're so blessed with plentiful coal and finding more natural gas in southwest Virginia. I was going to say this area is rich with natural gas. Yeah, and, uh, and coal bed methane and mm -hmm. that's, uh, I've visited the CNX gas facilities near Claypool Hill and, uh, and obviously a lot of coal and, and all of that means jobs, really good paying jobs in energy. And if we're using our energy, not only do you have, across the country, it could be over a million really good paying jobs. And then we have more affordable fuels mm -hmm. and energy and, and food prices are more affordable. Our country's more competitive for businesses, for manufacturing. And the best part of it all is, is we're keeping the money here in the United States sure. of America. Over 50% of our trade deficit is because of the importation of oil. So why not use American coal and natural gas and, and oil? Uh, rather than sending it out of our country, it's good for national security. But for people at their kitchen tables, it means more affordable fuels and food and electricity. And, uh, and the folks here, again, are, are willing and, and ready to, oh, yes. to do it. Yeah. And it means jobs, not just in the coal fields. It means jobs, obviously, if, the, if coal's doing well in natural gas. Mm -hmm. All the stores, whether it be a jewelry store, a restaurant, whatever, that's good. It also means jobs in the railroads. Uh, down in our ports of Virginia, you see, gosh, a dozen colliers lined up to, to be mm -hmm. getting our American coal. And uh, that means jobs for the railroads. Norfolk Southern has, has uh, ordered 1,500 new coal rail cars. And those coal rail cars are made in Roanoke. And that company has hired on 200 more people to, to make those cars. So that shows the, the ripple effect, the, the beneficial effect of unleashing our American and in particular Virginia energy resources. And, and the creativity, there's a project that we'll be hearing more about in the near future in Tazewell County where they're, uh, they've got a project of getting methane from the landfill. Yeah, see and, that's good. That's, you know, you're, you're getting that methane gas. Uh, you're not going to power our whole economy on no. it, but if you can get 2% out of methane gas, yes. why not? Why not use it beneficially? It's the same with the, the same logic on the coal bed methane, is you'd want to get that out of there anyway for the miner's safety. And if you can put it into a pipeline and use it beneficially uh, for a variety of reasons that natural gases use it, manufacturing of plastics and fertilizers and 
chemicals or tires uh, or in our homes, uh, we might as well use it. And so uh, I've seen that methane approach used in King George County, mm -hmm. of Virginia. They, they have a, a clean coal facility there and right near it is a, is a landfill and they're getting mm -hmm. the methane gas off it and, and, and generating a little electricity from it. So that makes sense. Oh, that's excellent. I've noticed among the guests that are here, uh, the governor's cabinet secretary, natural resources, economic development. Yeah. There may be others, but I think those are the two that are saying that this this area of the Commonwealth has the beautiful natural resources yeah. and there's a need, as you're saying, for more economic development. Yeah, yeah, uh, and, and maybe it's from having lived here, starting off here and, and loving Southwest Virginia. It's just beautiful, the rivers and the trails. And uh, in, the, in the Abingdon area to Damascus, to White Top Mountain, there's a Virginia Creeper Trail. It used to be a railroad right. bed, now it's being used for, for bike, biking. In fact, earlier this week, my wife Susan and, and, and two of our children were biking on the New River Trail, uh, going from the town of Freeze down to a trestle. And it's, you know, that, that sort of uh, outdoor uh, recreation is great. The other thing that is going on here, which I think is really smart as a region, is, is uh, the, the, the heritage, the music heritage mm -hmm. of here. Everyone's focused, you know, with the thousands that come into Galax for the Fiddler's Convention. Right. Down the parkway, there's a fellow named Joe Wilson who's got a museum on the, on the history of American music. The banjo coming from, from Africa, the fiddle coming from the Scottish, uh, Scots-Irish, mm -hmm. and blending together in the first recording studios uh, of country music were in Bristol. And so they have this crooked road trail, which is, and then it goes all the way, obviously, where the Carters, uh, May, Mother Maybell Carter, yes. who, and June Carter was married to Johnny Cash. But for those of us, the people who love, you know, whether it's bluegrass music, fiddling, country music, this was really the birthplace of it. And so I think all the various counties and communities linking together for folks who want to have that experience, I think is really smart. They also have a great museum here, and you see them in Abingdon, you see it here in Galax, with the local crafts, whether it's quilting mm -hmm. or whether it's woodworking, mm -hmm. uh, a variety of things, just really smart, creative approaches, which is a niche that uh, I think will attract people. And tourism is, and Susan, my wife Susan, when I was governor, was by far the best uh, promoter for, for tourism. But the great thing about tourism, it's great for small businesses. People come in from all around the world, really, uh, to Virginia. And whether it's for history or the natural beauty or the music or, or NASCAR races in Martinsville or, or Richmond or Bristol across the line, uh, all of that attracts people. They come in, they spend money. You get all that sales tax revenue. And then you don't have to educate their children. They leave. <laughs> and the biggest right. cost for, for local right. government is education. Mm -hmm. So it, and it has a secondary benefit of, of economic development in that you could have executives coming and they said, you know, we came down to this area or we visited out in this area. People really friendly, it's beautiful. Uh, the cost is, is not high. You have good electricity prices. You have a, you know, friendly people. Why don't we look at that area for locating one of our facilities? So it's, uh, it's a real plus for the economy and, and the Main Street program saving and preserving uh, right. historic buildings, whether it's in the town of Mar Marion or Galax or uh, the town of Independence, all of them. The Main Street program's been great in Bristol and Abingdon and a lot of places. And uh, the, other, the other benefit here are some of our institutions of higher education, whether it's UVA Wise, whether it's the community colleges, whether it's Bluefield College, all attract people from all over the world. One thing I worked on here was this crossroads facility, mm. uh, which is an educational facility in an abandoned Lowe's building. When I was a senator, called them up, asked them if they could sell that at a really good price. And so the local community college and the chambers of commerce are all uh, using that as an incubator for small businesses. And, and using it also for some training groups too. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a delightful facility. With all the, the tourism part that you've mentioned, certainly tourism folks are here at, at the Fiddler's and the Poor Man's Dinner. Yeah. And this year being the 75th anniversary of all of our state parks, we're delighted that, that our station Blue Ridge PBS was the one that was able to do a documentary with your friend Joe Elton and others. Oh, <laughs> great. And, and so showing the, the, the parks, because they have so much, whether they're parks out here, parks at the seashore, or wherever they are, but just yeah. some fantastic state parks. Yeah, they are. They're very much so. And I mentioned Hungry Mother State yes. Park as a... 
young where, lawyer, where, where right? You camped out. I, I slept in a sleeping bag there. Uh, Susan and I have enjoyed going to a fairy stone. I mean, we could go through all the state parks, but they, right. they are um, just another one of those many options, diverse uh, opportunities for people to enjoy Virginia and the natural beauty of Virginia. And uh, I, I love mountains. Some people like beaches. Some people like rivers. We have them all. Unless you want a desert or a glacier, we have it all in Virginia. Yes. And, uh, and it's great fishing also in a lot of these rivers um, and streams throughout Virginia. So uh, we have a lot of uh, historic uh, resources and assets that no other state has, with Virginia being really the cradle of American liberty at Jamestown. And then you have all the battlefields here. You have the mountains, the rivers. And, and also, I think the greatest asset of Virginia are its friendly people. And you come to any town uh, in Virginia, and people will make you feel welcome. Well, and you're moving around the Commonwealth and meeting with those friendly people. Before our time would, would run out, what are some of the challenges that you see that are facing us as Virginians these days? Well, number one is jobs. Uh, I was in Martinsville. The unemployment rate in Martinsville is the worst in Virginia. It's over 17%. And, uh, the, and, and people are very much concerned. I talked to folks just like Susan and our oldest daughter who graduated from college last year. Uh, students graduating from college are having a hard time finding right. work. And it's not just unemployment, it's underemployment. People are not in jobs uh, utilizing their talent, their education, their skills. So what I think is, is necessary is to reinvigorate that entrepreneurial spirit of America. And Virginia is well positioned mm -hmm. for it. Uh, and, and that means you have lower taxes, less burdensome regulations, energy policy is part of the, the solution, which will really, literally power our economy, and education is really important as well. I think Virginia having a right-to-work law and being the furthest state north on the eastern seaboard with right-to-work laws, I know as governor, really gives us a great competitive advantage. We have, we're blessed with the energy resources, we're blessed with the best port on the eastern seaboard. We have major railroads in Virginia, major interstates, a great location, and great people. So I'm very optimistic about Virginia uh, and Virginia's ability to control our own destiny and contribute to the betterment of not just the people of Virginia, but to the nation. What needs to be done is we need a federal government that's not fiddling around, but rather doing things and, and actively improving and putting Virginians and Americans at an advantage rather than a disadvantage with dangerous levels of debt as well as counterproductive punishing energy policies. But all those can be turned around, but there's an urgency to get it done now and stop dawdling. Thank you very much for being on This Week in Richmond here in Galax. It's and great to be here. Glad you're here and enjoy the Fiddler's Convention. I sure will. Thank you. Thank you, David. And thank you for your great leadership in presenting the best of Virginia. You're a wonderful ambassador.